So once again, our project was kind of over the music history of Jacksonville. And let's start with our goals for this project. So some of our goals for this project were mainly to provide an educational experience that was both fun, interactive, and new. And we want to immerse users into the environment by using the various different techniques that we've learned throughout the semester. And again, use this immersion to make learning fun. So how do we accomplish these goals? So we started by building an environment from scratch that kind of replicates the industrial feel that you'll get whenever you visit downtown Jacksonville. So we have brick walls, concrete floor, metal ceiling, you get the gist. And we incorporated assets from the Unity store that uh, the users can interact with and learn more about the artist with. We also created a HUD that provides you with information on the era, artist, and the different exhibits and gives you a short biography and description of that artist and exhibit. And we implemented a node-based movement system to kind of help you navigate through the environment. So let's talk about our exhibits. So as you'll see, whenever we hop in, we kind of have one big room and then in that room we'll have two or three artists and then it's broken down from there as far as different guitars or drums or pianos or whatever the exhibit is. And we also wanted to incorporate different things besides just guitars and pianos and we kind of built like a recording studio and like a backstage experience and stuff like that. We also added different songs from the artists, uh, some of their most popular works, and as you get closer to the artist it'll get louder and vice versa as you get further away it'll get quieter. And we also added videos of live performances in Jacksonville as well as music videos that you can find on YouTube. So how do we des design the ex exhibits? So we wanted to replicate an actual museum without having just the walk up, read the plaque. We wanted it more interactive than that. And again, we kind of built other experiences like, again, the recording studio and backstage experience. And overall, we just wanted to make the user feel like the rock star and kind of walk through the history themselves. Awesome. So as Kyle alluded to, we have a primarily a node-based uh, system that on initialization, all the grunt work in terms of computation is done uh, to build out the graph of the nodes that are actually out there, the edges ex uh, as well. Uh, and then all the artists exhibit data, period data, is parsed through in a, our own custom markup language. And that is then loaded into game objects so the user can kind of work his way through that, his or her way through that. Uh, and then in addition to that, the shortest paths are calculated for all the nodes within the museum itself. A uh, quick example of that, uh, I've, you guys have seen this before in our updates, but uh, for each of the nodes, it's going to calculate the shortest path to all the respective nodes within the museum so that informa information can just be queried and doesn't have to be co uh, computed in real time. Slide. The custom market language that we have here probably looks a lot like HTML because uh, that's what I stole it from. Uh, and then it's just going to allow us to real time add or subtract artist information so that the, uh, the Unity game engine can actually take that information out and apply it to where it needs to be and it kind of reduces some of the, the back end work that we had to do in making it. Slide. So as a user moves through the environment, he's going to be continually sphere casting and ray casting down to determine the nearest navigational node and music node. And then when navigation mode is active, it's going to query uh, that, sh that closest node, and then it's going to update the path appropriately. Uh, and then you guys will see an example of that as well. In addition to that, we have a music node that uh, it's going to determine what room the player is in, so there's no bleed over between rooms. It's going to be localized to that experience that the user is in at that moment and it's going to increase the volume appropriately as the user moves through uh, the exhibits. Some of the challenges we face, uh, lack of free quality assets. Uh, you guys have, uh, are all nodding your heads so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, there's also a limited amount of information on some of the artists here in Jacksonville, so we had to get a little bit creative, but we still had more than enough to uh, make this a pretty cool project. The movement system uh, was difficult because it's a two-dimensional environment, uh, so then we came up with two different solutions we'll talk through as Kyle's getting into the headset. Uh, and then lastly, the only thing we weren't able to actually implement was kind of that throwable script to allow the users to you know, pick the guitar off the wall. That was something that was really important to us. We just couldn't get it uh, done before this turned out. So with that, we'll have Kyle go ahead and hop in. And as this thing's getting booted up, you'll see 
Uh, it's going to give the user a little initializing the museum experience, and it's going to start turning off all these things here. So as we discussed, there's two primary means of locomotion that we have available to us. Uh, so if you want to uh, step out to the center right here. Um, the first one that he's in right now is what we're calling seated mode, where the player is going to navigate via left and right uh, joysticks. So left is going to go forward, backwards, strafe left and right, and then your right is going to turn the entire camera rig. This allows the users who maybe can't stand up and look around uh, the ability to navigate in the, our three-dimensional space. We also have a stand-in mode where the user's head direction determines what's forward and backwards. So as he looks around the room, you can see right there, hold your gaze, uh, we have the uh, Delius family lemon tree, uh, and you can see the little description that's associated with it. So if Kyle, if you want to go ahead and walk towards one of the, um, the music nodes, maybe the Johnson Brothers, you guys will hear, hopefully, our music getting a little bit louder, if I can find my mouse. There you go. So as he gets further away, it's going to either transition to a different node or just get silent. And then as he's looking at each exhibit, you see the name of the artist as well as a brief description of what that exhibit is. So Kyle, if you want to go ahead and toggle the left menu, we can show everyone the HUD. So on the left-hand side, when he toggles the HUD is active, we have the different periods. We have pre-war and then the decades uh, post uh, World War II. If he goes ahead and selects pre-war, for example, you can see we have the different artists as well as a brief description of that artist. And then Kyle, being a good Southern boy, is probably going to want to go see something like, I don't know, Leonard Skinner, right? So if he goes over to the 1970s, he selects Leonard Skinner. The first thing he can do is go up to the biography, maybe learn more because he didn't pay attention in Southern high school. Um, but if he backs out, he can select any one of these exhibits and begin navigating to. So backstage patch is a great one. So as he looks down, you can see the path is automatically illuminated. We have those helpful directional arrows as well. And as if he looks back to where he came from, you'll see that the breadcrumbs are picked up as we go. We're not leaving anything in the scene. So as we enter the May Action Room and Pat Boone, as he gets closer to May Action, you'll hear the king. And he, she wrote the uh, Heartbreak Hotel for Elvis Presley. And he'll continue his navigation out, but instead of going, because he's a rebel, uh, he's going to go ahead and make a left-hand turn into the 1960s room instead of taking the shortest path through the 1980s room. And you'll see here that the path is going to automatically update uh, appropriately based on uh, his location. See, there he goes. So now he's in the Ray Charles and uh, Classics 4. And he's going to work his way through the Allman Brothers exhibit. <clears throat> At any point in time, he could choose the end of navigation. We'll give you guys an example of what that looks like. But as he enters in the Allman Brothers exhibit, you can hear Ramblin' Man begin to play. And this is the stuff we were talking about, kind of more of this immersive experience. If you want to look to the right, Kyle, you can imagine yourself waiting outside the club, waiting to go into an Allman Brothers show here in Jacksonville, instead of just standing in an exhibit, saying, oh yeah, that was you know, the piano that the band used, for example. So as he works his way into the Larry Skinner room, this is one that I think we're really proud of. Kind of a backstage pass. You see pillow bottles on the, on the table there. We've got cigarette lighters and empty beer bottles and then guitars. Uh, and if you look down, you'll see that he has arrived at that exhibit, so there's nothing to navigate to anymore. The, exhibit, the navigation feature turns off, and he's free to explore the exhibit uh, at his own leisure. So Kyle, if you want to go ahead and navigate to, let's say, uh, 38 Special, just so we can show them what it looks like when you decide to be done with navigation. So if he presses the right menu button, it's going to deactivate the navigation there for him as well. So if you want to do a speed run to get us through, since we are coming up on time here, uh, towards the end of the exhibit, we have our 80s and 90s with 38 Special and Mace of Puff Daddy Lore. Uh, and then as he rounds the corner there, we're going to work our way into the 90s room, which is filled with uh, Jacksonville's finest, uh, Tim McGraw, and then entering into the 2000s room as well. Shinedown, also from Jacksonville. 
And then as he's working his way into the back, one thing that was important to us is make sure we have our work cited. So it's not pretty, but in the last room, you're going to see that every exhibit that we have uh, has been cited appropriately uh, for those of you who may be interested in something like that. And then we'll finish strong with a yellow card, Ocean Avenue. Uh, so that concludes our brief. Are there any questions? Yeah, so first. Uh,